may be seated. But someone may ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is not one is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun is one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the star is another. And star differs from splendor, and star differs from star and splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is shown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, being life. The first man, Adam, being a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the last, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable hath been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, and saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory, where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon, Simon, Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stripes and linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the stripes of linen lying there, and as, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand this from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the head and the other at the foot. They asked, Woman, why are you crying? And they had taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she had not realized that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you get, have put him, and I will get him. <coughs> Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Rami, Rami, Rabboni, which means teacher.
week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So with Adriana being gone, uh, this Sunday we have two of our youth group lead team that will be preaching. Um, this year there's four students that are on the lead team, um, Annie, Ethan, Emily, and Peter. Um, and they have helped Adriana plan youth group and games and um, they've given testimony to youth group. Um, and they've kind of just encouraged youth group and been praying for everyone and sending birthday cards and kind of things like that. So um, feel free to ask them more about what the lead team is. Um, but without further ado, Annie and Ethan. Good morning. So today is Easter, but what really is Easter and why do we celebrate it? Well, Easter is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. When Jesus was on earth, he healed people, he fed people, and he saved people. And a lot of people loved him for this. However, some people did not, and they didn't like that he claimed to be the Son of God. So they arrested him and brought him to trial. Jesus' trial was illegal in many different ways. First of all, was that he was questioned privately by the high priest. This was against the law because the only questioning that could be done had to be in front of the whole um, jury. The second of all, Jesus' trial was at night. The law had stated that trials could only happen during the day, and if it was going to go into the night, they had to pause and then resume the next day. Also, many false witnesses testified against Jesus, saying that he said things and did things that he actually did not. And lastly, um, at Jesus' trial, the high priest voted first. This was against the law because it was supposed to be like the lowest, like most or least important person voting first and then work all the way it's up to the high priest to avoid like influence and bias against the person who was accused. However, at Jesus' trial, that did not happen. Jesus was brought to Pontius Pilate um, for permission to crucify him because they needed the Roman um, permission. Pilate initially said that he was innocent, but the people revolted, and to keep the peace, Pilate decided to let them crucify him. People beat, him, beat Jesus, whipped him, and mocked him. And about 9 a.m. on a Friday morning, he was nailed to the cross with two other cr criminals. He was crucified at a place called Golgotha, and in Aramaic, this means place of the skull. Also, a sign above Jesus read, The King of the Jews. People shouted at him, saying, You are the one who claimed to be from God and save yourself. And they mocked him, saying, If he really is what he says he is, he would come down from there. At about noon on the Friday, the sky turned dark for about three hours, and there was a huge earthquake. Jesus shouted out, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? And then he said, It is finished. And about 3 p.m. on that Friday, Jesus Christ had died on the cross. At the time of Jesus' death, the temple curtain tore in two, and the Roman soldier that was there said that this man truly was the Son of God. In Hebrews chapter 9, it says that a veil in the temple is what separates us from God. Um, so this curtain is, signifies that sin is what keeps us from heaven. When Jesus died and that curtain tore in two, it shows that Jesus removed sin and he removed that barrier, um, and now everybody had the ability to go to heaven. A couple days later, on the Sunday morning, three women went to the tomb with spices to put on Jesus' body. But when they got there, the tombstone had been rolled away and his body was not there. They ran to the disciples, telling them that Jesus' body had been stolen. And then Peter and another, or another disciple, who we believed to be was John, ran to the tomb and saw the linens lying neatly folded in place. And they believed that he had rose. Later that Sunday morning, Mary had gone to the tomb. And when she got there, there were two angels there. 
They asked her, why are you crying? And she replied that they had taken away her Lord. When she left the tomb, she saw a man who she believed to be was the gardener. But when he said her name, she knew that he was Jesus. Later that Sunday evening, Jesus appeared to the disciple and shows, showed him the wounds in his, in his hands and on his side. And he told them twice, peace be with you. This reminds us that Jesus gives us peace and he doesn't want us to be afraid. In this story, the story of Jesus dying on the cross and his bodily resurrection is what the whole Christian faith is based upon. It's the biggest and the most important event in the whole Bible. He died to save us. He took our punishments away and he destroyed death for us. And if we truly believe in God and if we truly believe that Jesus died for us, we can see him finally and forever in heaven. And we get to have that eternal life because Jesus Christ beat death for us. And this is why we celebrate Easter. Sometimes we just have to believe that the resurrection happened. However, there is some strong evidence that um, shows that Jesus' resurrection actually took place. Now Ethan's going to come share a little bit about it. Like Annie said, I'm going to share a few pieces of evidence that the Bible and modern day knowledge give us that point towards the resurrection of Jesus. The first one was the stone that had been rolled away from Jesus' grave. This stone weighed anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 pounds and was four to six feet in diameter. It would have been hard for even a handful of men to move. Second one is the Roman soldiers' disappearance. During this time, the Roman soldiers were extremely disciplined. They were tasked with the duty of guarding Jesus' grave, and failure to do this would have led to imprisonment or even death. The simple fact that they disappeared shows that God was at work. The third was the folded linens. You may have, skim you may have skimmed over this earlier, but in verse 7 it talks about how the burial cloth that was around Jesus' head had been folded separately from the other linens that were on his body. A robber wouldn't have taken the time to do this, which shows that Jesus' body wasn't, or wasn't taken and that he had risen from the dead. The fourth and the most important are the disciples preached the story of Jesus' resurrection and were willing to die on the fact that he, was, that he had risen from the dead. They wouldn't have done this if the story had been fabricated. They were confident because Jesus had appeared to them after his resurrection. An example of this, which we read earlier, was when he, when he appeared to the disciples and told Thomas to feel his hand and look at his scars. After Thomas did this and realized that it was Jesus, Jesus responded by saying, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. We don't get to experience seeing Jesus' physical body like Thomas did. However, we're all here today, worshiping him and celebrating his resurrection. Ultimately, this is what faith is all about. We don't get to experience what Thomas did. Instead, we have to strive to be more like John. In verse 8, it talks about him. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. This is referencing John. He, walked, he ran into the tomb, saw the pieces of evidence, such as the stone being rolled away, the folded linens, and Jesus' body missing, and believed that he was not dead and that he had fulfilled the prophecies. Sadly, we fall short of this most of the times in our lives. We end up more like Mary in this story. Verse 10, it talks more about her. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, he said, Sir, er, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him.